This is the stock configuration of the Snowcat that I designed and sold kits of. There are two motors in the back, and there's plenty of extra space in the front. The whole thing is symmetrical, so it's pretty easy to add two extra motors for double the power. Not only did I do that, but I'm also going to run it on a 12S battery, which is around 50 volts. So doubling the number of motors and the voltage means this Snowcat will be about 8 times more powerful than the original version, which was already really powerful. Before we get into the build, a quick word about the sponsor of this video, which is Wargaming, and their hit game, World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a completely free, warfare-themed multiplayer online game featuring authentic tanks from the mid-20th century. Take control of steel beasts and battle through historic locations where strategy means victory. You'll get the chance to control an ever-expanding roster of historical vehicles, stunning graphics, and spectacular locations. Show off your mastery and face other players in thrilling PvP clashes. If you use the link in the video description and promo code TANKMANIA to sign up for World of Tanks, you'll get Excelsior, which is a tier 5 tank, 250,000 credits, 7 days premium access, and 3 tier 6 rental tanks for 10 battles each. These include the Tiger 131, Cromwell B, and the T3485M. These benefits are only available to new players. What are you going to do all summer long when there's no snow to drive your RC snowcat on? How about playing World of Tanks? It's really the next best thing. Thanks again to Wargaming for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to click on the link in the description to sign up. Now back to the video. For this build, I'm using 600 kV motors, and I'll probably burn them out, so I would not recommend trying this yourself. I designed some new mid-axle rails that incorporate 2170 size lithium-ion cells right into the frame. I just soldered all the cells together to create a 12S pack. Here's the whole thing, but now we need a way to keep the cells balanced, so for that I added a BMS. This also adds overcharge protection. To discharge the battery, I'm bypassing the BMS and just discharging straight from the cells. This is so that there's no current limiting going on at all. To charge the battery, I'm just using a benchtop power supply. I'm using these Flycolor 80 amp BL Heli 32 ESCs that I squeezed into this little 3D printed mount to hold them between each pair of motors. Unfortunately, I was unable to fit the BMS inside the shell, so I had to mount this body on top to hold the BMS. This prevents it from being able to drive upside down, which is kind of a bummer, but oh well. Here are some of the shots of my first test drive in the yard. The top speed was pretty dang fast for a tracked vehicle, but it wasn't super fast considering that it was consuming about 10 times as much power as your average e-bike, or in other words, 2.5 kilowatts. These tracks weigh about 4.5 pounds each, so it takes quite a lot of power to spin them quickly. Hmm, this wheel is a little bit broken. At one point I hit a tree going really fast and bent the axle. These were prototype axles that were thinner than the ones in the kit, but anyways I fixed that and took it out to the slopes.
Oh, tragedy has struck. I couldn't stop in time after hitting that cliff over there and then I fell off of this cliff. Oh no. <laughs> I can't imagine it's not broken. That's a pretty good sized drop right there. Are you okay, little guy? Let's see if it goes. Nope. Oh, it's dead. Good news, only the receiver battery got unplugged, so it's fine. We got smoke coming out of here. Not sure what burnt out, but something's not happy. Wow, -y. so roasted. The other three motors look fine, so I'm gonna switch back to six cell before I burn those out too. I'm gonna replace this BMS with this six cell BMS and then rewire all, all these cells to instead of be 12 S1P, it's gonna be six S2P. I found a nice big crack in the motor mount front wall, so that was probably from when it fell off that big snowbank onto the asphalt. So here's how the BMS is connected. Basically P plus and P minus are the charge input, and then you have uh, B plus, B plus going to the positive side of the battery, and B minus going, where is it, B minus going to the negative side of the battery, basically connecting to the power output. And then B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5, B go to all the different individual cell increments. So this setup does not have any discharge protection because I'm just discharging directly from the battery. It's just charge protection. Mainly what we want here is over voltage protection and cell balancing. After converting the Snowcat to 6S, I put the 12S ESCs in the old snow tank and ran it on 50 volts. Lo and behold, it was very underwhelming. Even doubling its speed still made it nowhere near as fast as the new Snowcat. Now a quick update on the second batch of Snowcat kits. All the parts have started to trickle in, so hopefully I should be able to get the kits shipped out within the next few weeks. Thanks to everyone who purchased a Snowcat. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.